to Evangelista. In this episode, we're going to be talking about electrochemical cells. Now, electrical chemical cells, we've got two types. We've got voltaic galvanic cells, which generate electricity from two different chemical reactions. And then we have electrolytic cells, which actually use a battery to drive the actual chemical reaction. So one generates electricity, one uses electricity. Let's talk first about voltaic cells or galvanic cells. This uses the fact that in an oxidation reduction reaction, we always have one gaining electrons and one losing electrons. And so the whole point is to harness that movement of electrons between the oxidation and reduction reaction to have those electrons generate some electricity. And this is pretty much how some batteries work. So here we have the loss of electrons and that's going to run through something that uh, needs electricity to run. And then it's going to be absorbed over here, gaining electrons. And we have this salt bridge here because that just con completes the circuit. Um, we need somewhere for the electrons to flow. So the whole point of the salt bridge is to complete the circuit. So let's take a look. We've got zinc metal in zinc sulfate solution. So zinc metal is Zn, and zinc sulfate gives us the Zn2 plus ion. And so we can see that this is going to lose electrons. Over here we have copper and copper sulfate solution. So copper metal is right here, copper solid. And the copper sulfate is this copper 2 plus ion. And that's gaining electrons. So when the zinc loses the electrons, the copper is going to be gaining them. And we can harness that loss of electrons. Now, in order to determine which one's going to be losing electrons and which one's going to be gaining electrons, we have to look at the activity series. The, the activity series, which is actually in your IB booklet, the more reactive metal is going to be the anode, the negative, and the more and the less reactive metal is going to be the cathode, the positive. Okay. The oxidation, uh, therefore, the oxidation is going to be occurring at the anode, and the reduction, the gaining of electrons, is going to be occurring at the cathode. So be very. Um, we'll look at this later, but be very um, observant of the charges here. In a voltaic cell, the anode is negative and the cathode is positive. This changes when we go to electrolytic cells. So know that anode is negative and cathode is positive only for voltaic cells. And just a quick little recap. At the cathode, we've got reduction happening. It's gaining electrons. It's positive. At the anode, we've got oxidation happening. It's losing electrons. It's negative. And the current always flows from the negative to the positive side, from the anode to the cathode. The more reactive metal, according to your activity series, is going to be at the anode. And the purpose of the salt bridge is to complete the circuit. It replaces the lost ions in the solution. This looks kind of weird, but this is how we kind of draw out that battery that I just showed you. So first you write the anode. We have zinc losing electrons to become Zn2+. Plus. This is the anode. Um, this little vertical line represents the phase boundary between the solid and the aqueous solution. We do two vertical lines for the salt bridge, and then we write the cathode on the right side. So copper sulfate, the copper ion, is going to gain two electrons to become copper metal. Remember that electrons go from the anode to the cathode. Here's another example, but instead of um, copper, we use silver here. A little more expensive. We still have zinc and zinc sulfate solution. We have silver and silver nitrate solution. That's where we get the silver ions from. Zinc is the more reactive metal, and that's why it's the anode, while silver is the least reactive, so it's the cathode. One more example here, copper and copper sulfate solution, silver and silver nitrate solution. Copper is more reactive, that's why it forms the anode, and silver is less reactive, it forms the cathode. All right, electrolytic cells. A couple things. This plus and minus right here, this represents a battery. So we do, instead of having something that we use to generate electricity, this is going to actually provide the electricity for us. Notice also that there's no salt bridge because there are no two beakers. We just have one beaker. And notice the, these metals, these electrodes, it doesn't really matter what they are. They can be the same electrode. As long as they're inert, they don't cause any reaction. And uh, we'll talk about the electrolyte, but this is where, notice here the anode um, are oxidized here and the cations are reduced here. Um, you can see that the signs have flipped 
for electrolytic cells. Here the cathode is negative and the anode is actually the positive side. And so this is showing the difference. So in a voltaic cell, remember the anode is negative, but in an electrolytic cell, it's positive. But note that oxidation occurs at both of them. And the cathode for the voltaic cell is positive. For the electrolytic cell, the cathode is negative. And this is where reduction happens. Um, and so pretty much how this works is this is how we did, we split water. So we hooked up a battery to, to water and we ran electricity through it. And as we ran electricity through it, the hydrogen stuck to the negative side and the negative oxygen stuck to the positive side. And remember, we collected the hydrogen to make fuel for our rockets. Um, and so this is what an electrolytic cell does. It uses electricity to split a, uh, a solution into its uh, cations and anions. So we can take a look at a reaction here. Problem. Describe the reaction that occurs to the two electrodes during the electrolysis of molten lead bromide. Now it has to be molten. You can't do this with solid lead bromide. It has to be kind of in its liquid phase. Write an equation for the overall reaction and comment on any likely changes that would be observed. So first of all, lead to bromide. We've got to figure out the formula for that. So lead is plus 2 right here, and bromine is minus 1. So that should be PBBr2 using the crisscross rule. Um, and so when that falls into its ions, we get lead with 2 plus and bromine minus. Now notice we don't write, even though this is a Brinkelhoff element, the reason we don't put Br2 is because these are ions. If we were to write molecular bromine, like bromine gas, then we would write Br2. But since this is an ion, it has a charge, we do not put Br2, we just put Br. And so remember, the, uh, the positive actually get attracted to the negative cathode, and the negative go to the positive anode. And at, at the anode, the bromine is oxidized, meaning it is losing electrons. And the cathode, the lead is getting reduced, meaning it's going to gain electrons. And so what's actually going to happen is we are going to form uh, lead and bromine. Um, so when it says comment on any likely changes that would be observed, so we'd be able to see this kind of gray metal, the, the lead forming on the cathode, and the solution would get kind of brown because bromine is kind of that brown liquid color.